Hello, I'm Tim Daniels from LapsOfTheShutter.com and today we're going to cover how to create a cinematic effect in a similar style to that of Masashi Wakui. I'm sure you've seen his photos on Flickr. I've been following his work for years but finally wanted to try and figure out how his work is done. By hand and without any plugins and Lightroom and Photoshop. I have a photo taken in Shinjuku in Tokyo that we can use as a good demonstration of how to recreate this effect. Before we get into it, here's the photo straight out of the camera, and here's the end result. The key parts of this technique are the crushed blacks, the colour toning in the shadows and highlights, and the glow of the bright lights. You can use plugins for this of course, but it's easy enough to do by hand, and the extra layer of control means that you can potentially create a much more special photo. Let's go back to the before and start in Lightroom. The basis of this technique is in the use of an extreme white balance that is then recovered by split toning. So push the white balance to its maximum of 50,000 and set the tint for zero. Don't worry about how it looks because we can then use split toning to partially reverse the effects of white balance. In the split toning on the highlights tab, we need a yellowy colour. A hue around 60 seems to work well, with the saturation set to 50. Use a deep blue hue for the shadows of around 225, with saturation at 100. You should see a large colour change in your photo. Use the balance slider to get this to your liking. That's most of the colour effects complete, using only white balance and split toning. It can help to use a camera calibration tab to fix any colour problems in the shadows if you have them. Try pushing the shadows tint to one extreme. And then move the green and blue primary hues to around minus 25 to 35. That's quite a nice stylized effect already. If you want, you can stop here. If you don't want to have to do this yourself every time you process a photo like this, there are a couple of presets that will do this for you in the totally free Lightroom Develop system available from lapseoftheshutter.com, along with over a thousand other presets and brushes. We don't have to stop here though, we can do more with this photo. Let's move on to the tone curve to create the crushed blacks and to also add some more toning. Click on the little symbol in the bottom right of the tone curve to activate the point curve. Select RGB as a the channel, then click on the curve near the bottom to add a point and drag the bottom of the curve up. How high you move this point depends on the photo. Just drag it up and down until it looks good to you. To give a little extra tone to the shadows, we can do the same to some or all of the individual colour channels. For this effect, doing the same with the green channel works well, as this adds extra green to the shadows. You may also want to reduce blues in the highlights by pulling the top of the blue curve down. And that's the tone curve done. Now we just need to make a few basic adjustments to finish our work in Lightroom. I'll reduce contrast and increase clarity, compress the brights by raising the highlights but lowering the whites, and giving a slight vibrance boost. Finally, we can boost sharpening to a quite extreme level. This is too much for most photos, but works well with this effect, particularly as we will be adding in some softness in Photoshop. Now let's export to Photoshop to finish the photo. I'll also create one more version, with the white balance pushed to the other extreme, this will help us to colour the shadows in Photoshop. After opening our first version of this photo in Photoshop, the first thing to do is to add glow to all of the bright light sources. I'm going to skip ahead and use an action from the Photoshop Colour Control Action Pack to create this highlight glow. This is available for free from lapseoftheshutter.com. If you don't want to use the action and want to create this effect yourself, it's easy enough to do on your own. Simply move to the Channels tab and create a Brights Luminosity Mask by control clicking on the RGB thumbnail. 
Hold Ctrl Alt Shift and click again to refine this mask to only the brightest parts of your photo. Then go back to the Layers tab and duplicate your base layer. This has duplicated only the parts of the photo that you selected with your mask. That is, the brightest parts of your photo. In this case, it's the illuminated signs. You can now run a blur filter on this layer and change its blending mode to soft light and duplicate it a few more times to enhance the effect. To see how to create this effect in more detail, take a look at the How to Make Sunsets Glow video. So let's delete those layers and go back to those created by the action. It's quite a strong effect, but you can of course reduce the opacity if you like. Next we can bring in the cold version of this photo, create a layer mask which we can fill with black by inverting the layer mask with Ctrl I, and using a large soft paintbrush, paint out the edges of the layer mask so that the blue shows through. We can use a levels layer to add more contrast by moving the middle marker to the right. We can then use a layer mask to target the contrast adjustment to only the edges of the photo. Then we can use a curves layer to add green to the shadows, reduce blue in the highlights, and reduce overall amounts of red to create a more cinematic effect. The exact curves changes you make depend on each individual photo, but even small changes here can have large effects. The photo is still a little on the blue-purple side overall, so we can use a colour balance layer to add a bit of green to the shadows. and that now looks pretty similar to those photos we started with. We can now sharpen the highlights using the action in the Photoshop Colour Control Action Pack so that the glow isn't so overpowering. If you want to recreate these sharpening actions yourself, take a look at the Sharpen Your Photos the Right Way video. And that's the cinematic effect finished. Rather than copying this technique exactly, it's best to use this as a base to process your own photos. Why not try it out and let me know how you get on? There's also plenty of other free tutorials and resources available at lapsoftheshutter.com.